It's another Temu product, not a sponsor. I've just been buying various things from them just to take apart for our entertainment. This one is described as a one piece outdoor camping lamp with tungsten filament LED bulb for emergency night market and street stall use. I think the key things here are camping lamp with tungsten filament and it's available in three different shapes um, and it is rechargeable. The price varies according to the shape. And uh, the price does include shipping, but there is a bit of a thing there about abusing the shipping system. It comes in a box like this with the light itself and a USB-C charging cable. And has helpful text on the side that is completely all just mushed together. They've missed, removed a lot of the spaces and it says, Products used to dim the lights should be prohibited during charging. That doesn't make sense. Charging time is approximately four to six hours with the Type-C charger or a computer. Do not leave the battery unattended while charging. When charging is complete, please also it move. The power supply has discharging function. Excellent. This is all good to know. In use, it has what they call three gears. It's got the little USB charging port, the flap, and a little red LED to show it's charging. Charges at 500 milliamps. And when you press the button, it lights at full intensity. And you'll see a slight pulse of modulation, and then you click it again, it goes down to the lower intensity, a bit more pulse of modulation, then click it again, it goes to the lowest, and maybe a bit more enhanced pulse of modulation. It's still useful levels of light. However, the battery doesn't last long. I've tested it, I left it for several hours at the low level, and uh, it seemed to go down to a lower intensity quite quickly. But that's okay, we can hack stuff like that. It's worth mentioning that by swiping it backwards and forwards while uh, it was lit, I showed that the, I, well, I found out that the full intensity is actually 50% pulse of modulation duty cycle. So it theoretically could have gone to a higher brightness. The middle setting is about 25% and the lowest setting is about 10-ish percent uh, pulse of modulation. Okay, let's try and open this and... It is, oh, that just squeezed the button there. Oh, it does actually. <laughs> I thought this was glued. This is good. It is unscrewing. This is nice. This is what we want. Good access. Uh, is there glue in there? I like the way the filament is mounted on these uh, springy supports to give it stress relief. However, it's probably not designed for the stress I'm about to expose it to by getting a screwdriver. Screwdriver. And then just randomly levering it out. Is this going to come out without a struggle, or is there going to be a struggle? It's kind of coming out. Oh, this may be destroyed in the process. I'm not sure if there's something I should know here. Is there a hidden screw? It does have a carabiner in the top, which is the one that uses the off-center pivot points to actually provide the springiness. I don't know if maybe... Hold on. No, I don't really see... What if I push down that? No, that's not helping. I don't know what's holding this in. If it breaks, it breaks. I got this for our exploration. It does feel like it's actually held in. Maybe it's just held in at the sides here. This circuit board does not want to move. That makes me wonder why. What is holding this in place? Has it been glued in? I don't see any sign of a screw so i'll just keep prizing and you know what's the worst could happen it will break <laughs> it will break at some point won't it okay so that was just a friction fit then where here's the cell here's the, all the circuitry oh it's a, a standard double a sized lithium cell of unknown uh specification the circuit board Looks very straightforward. It looks as though it's got the... Well, let's take it apart. And, well, I'll take the picture and we'll analyse it. We'll take a look at the circuitry. And that will uh, tell us all we need to know. One moment, please. And resume. Isn't hindsight a wonderful thing? It would have been so much easier getting the LEDs out of the base here if I'd known that it kind of bayonet caps in, but at the factory they must have a tool that bridges over the filaments and has a couple of pins that go down into here and they basically put it down and then rotate it and that locks it into position. I could try that right now. No, I can't because I've got wires in it now. But it does. I tried it earlier. It goes in and it rotates and that's what locks it in place. Then they put a little sliver of glue in it and they screw this bit in and it locks it all in place. 
The lithium cell, I've tested it, 282 milliamp hour is not good capacity for this, but not to worry, it's got loads of hackability. Let me zoom down on the uh, circuit board and we'll explore it. Very textbook, it has the classic 8-pin mystery microcontroller with the classic pinout of the PIC-12. And uh, it's quite interesting, it's a nice enough design. It's interesting that they've just used four pins in it and they've just chosen the four corner pins, power at one end and an input and an output at the other end. There is the classic LTH charge chip with a 2K uh, resistor that programs a current about 500 milliamps. There is a resistor for the two charge indicator LEDs. There's a red one and a green one. Didn't know it had a green one as well. Uh, just lack of patience, not letting it charge up fully. There's a push button and there's a standard NPN transistor, but it could take a MOSFET. However, they've used an NPN transistor and a couple of 1 ohm resistors in parallel to give half an ohm. Um, decoupling circuit for the processor, 10 ohm resistor capacitor. Let's take a look at the schematic. Here is the schematic. I shall zoom down even further on this. No great surprises, it's very textbook. But that's okay. It's a nice product. Uh, it's a nice design. It just needs a few tweaks. It needs hacked and modified to suit yourself. The USB is USB-C. Unfortunately, they've not included the two resistors that uh, let it indicate to a modern, intelligent USB power supply that it should be putting out current. So it doesn't uh, supply the 5 volts. Uh, you're going to have to plug this into a dumb charger if you want it to charge. There is a decoupling capacitor across that, which is good. It's part of the textbook thing for this. Uh, there is the classic one resistor going from that uh, incoming positive supply. So let's call this plus 5 volts. Uh, we'll call this 2.4 to 4.2 volts, because that's actually what it is. And 0 volt down here. So the resistor goes from the 5 volt supply to two LEDs. The red LED is switched to the zero volt rail by this chip when it's charging, but then it switches off when it is fully charged. So what actually happens there is that while it's charging, the current flows through this resistor through the red LED, that pulls the voltage down to about two volts across that, which means that the green LED can't light. When the charge is completed and it turns the red LED off, the voltage goes up higher and then the green LED can light. It's very, very simple. It's a, a one pin, two color, one resistor arrangement. Very neat. There's a 2K resistor that programs the current. Uh, there's the output to the miserable lithium cell that they'd actually soldered onto the ends. I wonder if this is a recycled cell. I wonder if it's basically just uh, been re-sleeved uh, just because it, you know, it's an end of life cell because this size should have a much higher capacity. But there is loads of options. You could, there is space in here. It's kind of optimised for this size of cell, but there's also the position for putting a rectangular cell in. So you could actually even cut some of the plastic away. And you could stuff this with as much lithium cell as you could fit in there. Loads of potential. There's the decoupled supply for the microcontroller, so it's not affected by the switching, the pulse of modulation of the, the LED, which causes a slight fluctuation. So it's a 10 ohm resistor. I measured the, resi the capacitor in circuit is roughly 5.5 megfarad, closest 5.6, uh, but that's testing in circuit that could be affected by the microcontroller. Um, this one also tested roughly 100 nano, which is about right for that, but that again, that was in circuit. There's the button pulling to the zero volt rail. Here is the transistor. I thought this was going to be a MOSFET. It's not. It's a standard NPN transistor. It's a Y1, but it does have the normal component arrangement for a MOSFET. 10K pull-down resistor, 1K control resistor. Um, it dropped 1.3 volts in use. It was dropping a higher voltage than these resistors, which is just odd. There's the two resistors, two 1 ohm in series, although the transistor is doing all the current limiting because it's being pushed quite hard. It got up to about 30 degrees Celsius, which isn't dramatic, but it's not ideal. And there's the LEDs. Uh, scope for hacking. Aside from upgrading the lithium cells greatly, you could replace this with an A2SHB, probably. A suitable MOSFET, if it's pin compatible. It should be pin compatible. Let me just check this out. Uh, gate. Uh, yes, that would work. Emitter and collect that uh, gate emitter and collector gate source and drain that uh, would work. Yes, interesting. I wonder where my A2SHBs are. I've got a 
big strip of them and I've lost them. Uh, but loads of uh, potential. And then, of course, you can change these resistors if you wish. You can increase the capacity. You can make it more efficient or keep the existing transistor arrangement. You could cut one of these resistors off if you wanted it to last longer or just adjust it to whatever sort of intensity, battery versus uh, lifespan, runtime you, you wanted. But there we go. Uh, it's actually all right. It's a good starter project, if you will. I mean, that's quite a nice product. Uh, I do like this. It'll probably be going back together again. I may retrofit it with a better cell. Now, another option you have here, if you're looking for something more decorative, lower current even, you could replace the filaments with that. Uh, you could actually just tack in some of those uh, copper wire LEDs, the ones that are just soldered along copper wire, and you could just fill it with those just to create a cluster of little points of light if they do that but the filament itself looks quite nice and with uh, enough hacking this could actually be a very useful camping light with the option of just recharging it from a suitable 5 volt solar panel so uh, it's not bad I quite like it it's a very nice little device